On the 5th of September 2003, disaster struck at Disneyland on the Big Thunder Mountain roller coaster in an incident that sadly resulted in the death of 22-year-old Marcelo Torres in one of the park's most infamous and shocking cases of death. Almost overnight, sadness turned into anger after investigators released shocking information proving the incident should not only have never happened, but could have been prevented entirely. What happened that day would forever leave a stain on Disneyland's reputation and change safety regulations entirely. This is Death at Disneyland, the infamous death of Marcelo Torres. Despite being a massive story at the time, little is known about the victim. We do know that Marcelo Torres was born to parents James and Carmen Torres on the 30th of August 1981 in Torrance, California. He was described as being a good and obedient kid. In his younger years, Marcelo attended high school in Arizona, where he was described as a role model to others. His friend said he never drank or smoked or did anything like that. He then moved on to Brooks College in Long Beach, California, where he was studying to become an animator which was a passion that followed him throughout his life. It was here that Marcelo met Vicente Gutierrez, who would go on to become his business associate and best friend. On September the 5th, 2003, Marcelo and Vicente, along with their other friends Christina Becker and Shannon Zinder, decided to go to Disneyland for an unforgettable day. That day was unforgettable, but not in the way that they had hoped. On that day, the group of friends arrived at Disneyland, California, early on in the morning, and after riding a few other attractions, decided to go on the Big Thunder Mountain roller coaster. The Big Thunder Mountain Railroad first opened on the 2nd of September 1979 and was designed by Tony Baxter and Bill Watkins. The ride goes up to 58 kilometers an hour and has a track length of 2,671 feet. There are four different versions located in different Disneyland parks, and the Big Thunder Mountain has always been one of Disney's most popular rides. The roller coaster has a detailed backstory with western themes, and is one of the tamer in the park, catering to people of all ages. There aren't any inversions or significant drops, but it moves rapidly, and has a lot of dips and tight corners. There is a total of five trains, and a locomotive. The locomotive was the train at the front, and was purely cosmetic. Each car had three benches, and the safety restraint included a lap bar. Five years prior to Marcelo riding, there had been an incident where a five-year-old boy was seriously injured on the ride after his foot became wedged between the car and the platform. This led to his left foot being amputated. After this, the safety on the ride was improved, but Disneyland never acknowledged the injury to be the reason. The four boarded train two on Big Thunder Mountain at some time in the morning. Marcelo was sat next to Vicente in the front of the car, which was behind the locomotive. He was sat on the right hand side. His two friends Christina and Shannon were sat directly behind them. The lap bar lowered and the ride set off. Around one third into the ride, the locomotive which was in front of Marcelo and Vicente derailed before entering the tunnel. The following comes from the court of the state of California documents. The derail wheels slammed into the brakes attached to the floor between the rails. This impact forced the rear of the locomotive up and its nose down. When the front of the locomotive struck brake four, the back shot upwards towards the ceiling of the tunnel. Violently breaking away from the cars as it pitched up, the locomotive slammed into the tunnel roof and came crashing down onto the first passenger car the force of the impact crushed the fiberglass and metal frame of the car. In doing so, the entire weight of the locomotive crashed down on top of Marcelo Torres, crushing his chest and pinning his body to the seat. In short, the locomotive derailed, causing it to nosedive. The back end then hit the top of the tunnel, which then crashed down onto Marcelo, violently crushing him in the process. He was, however, still alive, but trapped in his seat. Despite paramedics' best efforts, he eventually bled out on the scene. Ten others were injured in the accident. Some of them managed to evacuate themselves, and others were sent to hospital. Vicente, who was riding next to Marcelo, said the last thing that he remembered was going through the tunnel. He said, 
All of a sudden, I heard something really loud and shaky. I told myself, this isn't normal. I really thought it was a dream. I had four flashes, like I was in and out. I fainted, then woke up and fainted again. I saw Marcelo unconscious, then two of my other friends. It was a blur. After hearing his friend hadn't made it, he said he was devastated. The ride was then closed down, and the investigation was launched. The investigation brought up some shocking findings. Unknown to any of the park's guests that day, the Big Thunder Mountain was experiencing problems for weeks leading up to the 5th of September. This was known by Disney, the mechanics, and ride operators, but were ignored. The noises heard were clicking noises. Three days before the incident, the maintenance team replaced an unstopped wheel on the ride, but inadequately tightened the bolts, resulting in a yellow warning light. The same warning light showed up on the day of the incident, but ride operators claimed that they didn't know what it meant, so carried on as usual. They also did test rides that day where they heard unusual noises and concluded that the ride should be shut down for safety reasons, but didn't, due to fear from upper management, so allow guests to ride anyway. Investigators claimed that the incident happened due to a mechanical failure, blaming ride operators, the mechanics, and Disney management. The report also stated that the ride was safe, but safety regulations had to change. Staff had to be completely retrained and take action if any unusual noise was heard. Wiley Aitken that represented the Torres family said, this was not just one mechanic making a mistake. This was really systemic to how they were running the park. The Marcello family rightfully sued Disneyland for wrongful death and settled their case for an undisclosed sum two years after the death of their son. After settling their case, the Torres family donated $500,000 to Brooks College to provide scholarships for aspiring animators like Marcello. Marcello's mother stated, there is no money possible to pay for his life, ever, but that is the only remedy the law can provide. Now that this exhausting emotional process has finally concluded and we have our answers, we will hopefully have some closure. Disney fully accepted responsibility for the disaster which claimed the life of Marcello and injured 10 others. Their spokesman stated, We all deeply regret that this tragic accident occurred and are terribly saddened by the grievous pain this caused the Torres family. The ride opened again in 2004 and there have been no further incidents, but the death of Marcello will forever be a haunting reminder of what can happen and go wrong when safety regulations are not followed are maintained.